Welcome back everyone, Mark Thomas here. Let's talk about tips and tricks to taking the C-Risk exam. You know, enterprise risk management is key. Now, successful IT enterprise risk management needs qualified and experienced professionals. And ISACA's C-Risk certification is a high-level certification program that allows professionals to build a greater understanding of the impact of IT risk and how it relates to organizations. Now, the C-Risk certification was updated in August of 2021, so the exam will test the new C-Risk job practices. It looks a little different, as you will find if you read through the updated C-Risk review manual or the seventh edition. I'll show you more about it during this video. Passing ISACA's C-Risk is not an easy endeavor. Stay with me, and I'll walk you through the basics of preparing for the C-Risk exam. What we'll hit in this short video are the C-Risk requirements. We'll talk content domains, exam essentials, and stay with me because I'll offer you my exam preparation tips right at the end. C-Risk stands for Certified in Risk and Information Systems Control. This addresses the need for professionals who understand both technology and how to implement and align an effective risk management and control framework within your enterprise goals. Now, the updated C-Risk exam content outline is based on the latest work practices and knowledge to keep certification holders ahead of the game in tackling real-world threats in today's business landscape. This is a professional certification by ISOC. It's globally accepted. C-Risk professionals will demonstrate skills in enterprise risk management and information system controls. Now, enterprise risk management, that's the discipline by which an enterprise in an industry assesses, controls, exploits, finances, and monitors risks from all sources for the purpose of increasing the enterprise's short and long-term value to stakeholders. IS control is the combination of strategic, managerial, and operational activities involved in gathering, processing, storing, distributing, and using information and its related technologies. Some C-Risk facts here. The exam includes 150 questions. It's divided into four domains. We'll talk about that. And it must be completed in less than four hours. The exam is now offered online with remote proctoring and in-person locations. And once the C-Risk exam is successfully passed, you're still required to give proof of at least three years of work experience managing IT risk by implementing IS controls and designing including experience across at least two C-Risk domains. As of the time of this recording, more than 30,000 professionals have earned the C-Risk certification since it was introduced in 2010. To earn the C-Risk designation, the C-Risk candidate must meet these following requirements. You have to pass the C-Risk exam. We'll talk about that in future slides. You'll submit the application. That'll be within five years of the exam passing date. And you have to have verified evidence of a minimum of at least three years of cumulative work experience performing the tasks of a C-Risk professional across at least two C-Risk domains. Of course, you've got the Code of Ethics. ISACA sets forth a Code of Professional Ethics to guide the professional and the personal conduct of its members and the certification holders. The goal of the Continuing Professional Education, or CPE, policy is to ensure that all C-Risks maintain an adequate level of current knowledge and proficiency in the field of risk. To maintain your C-Risk, you must earn and report a minimum of 120 CPE hours every three years and at least 20 hours annually. To get set up with this exam, online exam fees are about $575 for members, $760 for non-members, and of course you have an application processing fee of $50 for both members and non-members, and of course your annual Maintenance fee is 45 for members and 85 for non-members on an annual basis. In the C-Risk exam, there are 150 multiple choice questions, one best answer from four options, A, B, C, or D. All certification exams consist of 150 multiple choice questions that cover the respective job practice areas created from the most recent job practice analysis. C-Risk exam is based on job practices. Task statements describe the specific tasks that you should be able to perform in order to meet that job practice. 
You'll have four hours or about 240 minutes for this exam, allowing a little over 1.5 minutes per question. ISACA certification exams are now computer-based and administered at authorized PSI testing centers globally. Exam registration is now continuous, meaning you can register at any time with no restrictions. Once you've registered, you have a 12-month eligibility period to take the exam. And you'll receive a preliminary score at the end of the exam. Official scores will be sent via email within about 10 days. Each candidate who completes the C-Risk exam will receive a score report. ISACA uses and reports scores on a common scale from 200 to 800. And in order to pass the exam, you have to have a 450 or higher. Of course, go out to the ISACA site, get the exam candidate information guide, and it has a lot of really good information out there for you to prepare for this exam. I told you there are four basic domains in the new updated C-Risk. We have the governance domain, IT risk assessment domain, risk response and reporting domain, and finally, IT and security domain. Under the governance domain, you can expect that about 26% of the exam questions or about 39 questions are going to come from this specific domain. Under governance, you're going to see organizational governance and risk governance. Within organizational governance, strategy, goals and objectives, organizational structure, roles, responsibilities, culture, policy, standards, business processes, and organizational assets. Under risk governance, enterprise risk management, Risk management frameworks, three lines of defense, of course, the risk profile, risk appetite, and risk tolerance, and professional ethics, laws, regulations, and contracts. Under the IT risk assessment domain, about 20% of your exam comes from here, around 30 questions. Under this domain, we're going to see risk identification, assessment, analysis, and evaluation. Under risk identification, we'll talk risk events, threat modeling, and threat landscape. Vulnerability and Controlled Efficiency Analysis and Risk Scenario Development, one of my favorites. Under Assessment, Analysis, and Evaluation, we'll talk about concepts, standards, and frameworks, the Risk Register, Analysis Methodologies, Business Impact Analysis, and of course, Inherent and Residual Risk. Under the third domain, Risk Response and Reporting, this is about 32% of your exam, 48 questions here. Under this, we have Response, Control design implementation, risk monitoring, and reporting. Under risk response, you'll see risk and control ownership, risk treatment and response options, managing risk for processes, third parties, and emergent sources, control types, standards and frameworks, control design, selection and analysis, and control implementation, testing, and evaluation. Under control design and implementation, again, we'll talk standards and frameworks, control types, design, selection, analysis, and the overall implementation and testing. And finally, risk monitoring and reporting, risk treatment plans, data collection, aggregation, risk and control monitoring, reporting techniques, KPIs and KRIs, and key control indicators. And finally, under IT and security, about 32%. 33 questions here. What you'll find is information and technology principles and security principles. Under the IT principles, of course, we'll talk enterprise architecture, operations management, project management, resiliency, data lifecycle management, system development lifecycle, and emerging technologies. And under security principles are concepts, frameworks, and standards, security awareness training, and privacy, and principles of data protection. Preparation materials and training. On the preparation side, you've got the C-Risk Review Manual. Begin preparing for your exam by reading this review manual. I can tell you it's a must read. It's available in ebook and hard copy format, and it is arranged according to C-Risk's job practice areas that we just talked about. You can be sure of one thing with this manual, the answer to every question or how to get to the answer to every question is somewhere amongst its pages. Now, the C-Risk Review Manual is on the seventh edition, and this is a reference guide designed to assist you in preparing for the C-Risk exam. Now, it's really only one source of preparation for the exam, but it should not be thought of as the only source, nor viewed as a comprehensive collection of all the information and experiences that are required to pass the exam. 
you have the sample exam questions, sign up for the Q&A database. This is a subscription with interactive, customizable sample exams that draw from a database of questions. You also have the exam prep or online community. Now, this is a really cool resource. The C-Risk exam prep online forum is a great place to ask questions, answer practice exam questions, and share ideas and experiences to help successfully prepare for the exam. Over on the training side, a few choices here. You can go to ISACA training. Go to the ISACA site. They have in-person training and they have conferences, customized on-site corporate training, online review courses, and virtual instructor-led courses. You can also go to an accredited training provider. ISACA chapters routinely host exam preparation courses and many of them have accredited trainers. So ask your chapter leadership or check out your chapter website. You can also find an accredited training provider who can teach a class for you. It's very important that they are accredited through the APMG accreditation process. And of course, you want to create a training program suitable to your specific learning needs. Pretty basic here on general exam tips. Of course, you know you want to read each question carefully. Remember, one word can throw an entire question off in these exams. I like to go through and eliminate known incorrect answers. You'll find that generally one, maybe two of the possible answers you can remove and it might increase your odds if you have to guess. Of course, it goes without saying, make the best choice possible, but look for those key words like most, best, and be very careful about absolute terms like always and never. Finally, make sure you keep track of your time and answer all questions. There's no penalty for wrong answers. Grading is based solely on the number of questions you answer correctly. So now let's go to my top three tips for taking the C-Risk exam. My top tip number one, do not rely on your personal experience to answer the questions. Think about the C-Risk content. Now, of course, you have to have some personal experience because the ISACA C-Risk is designed for experienced experts and we're expected to have experience with IT risk and control. While in a real situation, your personal experience plays an important role whenever making a crucial decision, relying on it too much during this exam could lead to failure. So let's take a look at this answer. Which role in the enterprise is the most appropriate role to determine data classification and access to data? Again, this is one of those where be very careful about how you do it at work. Let's jump in and take a look here. A says the access management team. I'm not sure I like that one. The access management team, this is tough. Many of you might lean towards this answer because your company incorrectly assumes that the access management team is accountable for determining classification and access to data. Folks, this is not correct. According to C-Risk and with most good practices, this is something that the owners of the data are accountable for. A is gone. B, system administrator, absolutely not. The system administrator is more concerned with how the system receives, stores, transacts, secures and disseminates data and information. That one is definitely gone. The application owner. Now I'll use the same reasoning for crossing this off as I used for the system administrator. And then we have D, the data owners. Absolutely, the data owners are accountable for determining classification and what role gets different types of access to the data. This is one where you could be easily confused based on who does it at your enterprise. See risk wants us to know that the data owners are the ones who do this. Try to identify which domain the question is coming from. You'll find that many incorrect answers will come from other domains. Let's see what we've got here. Here's an example. Which of the following would be most appropriate for the risk practitioner to do following risk analysis and assessment? This is pretty interesting. So which domain would this be coming from? This is talking about the second domain, which is IT risk assessment, which includes risk identification, assessment, analysis, and evaluation. A says communicate the enterprise risk appetite to the enterprise. Well, that's going to be incorrect. Why is that? In what domain do you think we do this? You got it. The first domain, which is risk governance, cross off A. Let's go to B, determine appropriate key risk indicators 
for each risk assessed? Probably not. Wow, it's tough, but I think I would really consider this in the monitoring and reporting domain, which is the last domain. Let's get rid of B. C, present analysis and assessment findings to the risk owner and suggest appropriate responses. I like that one. That falls into the right domain. Even though the assessment analysis takes place in domain two, where we assess the risk, it's a key task to suggest appropriate responses to the risk owners. And as practitioners, we do not make the final decisions on risk responses. The risk owners do that. Let's go take a look at D. Conduct security awareness training on the chosen risk response. Incorrect, that's coming from the fourth domain, which is IT and security. Folks, we're going with C on this answer. If all else fails and you're completely lost in the question, pick the one that creates the most actionable value from your stakeholder's perspective. What do we mean by this? Take yourself out of the risk practitioner role and think about yourself as a business unit leader, a customer, or a client. What would they think is the most valuable to them? Here's the question, which of the following would be the most appropriate way to assist management in determining risk responses? What are some key words in this question? Again, I'm reading this from a risk practitioner perspective, and the question's asking me how I can assist management. I also see here that we're in the third domain, which is risk response. Now, first glance of all the answers, I could probably remove the last one. Why? Uh, because legal issues really aren't our only concerns. Remember, legal is one of several impacts we could have, and they could also be financial, safety, reputation, privacy, goals, achievement, so on. So I'm going to get rid of D right off the bat. Now that I've removed one, let's look at the rest of them. A says impact of the risk. Well, I can remove this one because remember, in the previous domain, we assessed risks using likelihood and impact. So although this sounds great, it's only half correct. Now this leaves me with two, cost benefit analysis and risk appetite level. And I have no idea where to turn here. Now I know from my training as well as studying the C-Risk Guide that both of these are correct. You'll see these types of questions a lot where you can't determine which one is right. Well, let's say I'm short on time and I need to get this one answered. So I'll pick the answer that appears most valuable to my enterprise. So my answer for this is B, cost benefit analysis. Because remember, the business makes decisions on many factors and the business typically would not make the decision to spend more resources, and in this case cost, on the response than the benefits achieved. I decided to remove risk appetite level because although that is an important factor to determining responses, cost benefit analysis has more value to my business. We're going with B. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thomas here. Thanks for your kind attention. I hope this short video has been helpful for you. And remember, this is the new C risk with updated domains, exam questions, and content. Good luck on taking the C risk exam. We'll see you next time.